the Sunday School. It's good seeing all of you here. Looking forward to what God has for us today. And take your hymn books if you would. Let's all stand and sing the first and last verse of 447, The Lily of the Valley. 447. <laughs> verses 1 and 2. Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection things above, not on things on the earth. That's one big thing I believe we have a problem with today, one of the big root problems. People want happiness on this earth. And they're not looking above, looking to God, looking to their heavenly treasures. We have something much better waiting on us here than we do here on this earth. And I'll, that's uh, I do believe one of the problems we have today. Let's look to God and to heaven instead of the mess this world has to offer. Let's stand and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us such a day our daily bread. Give us our debts and forgive our debtors. Please not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of prayer. Amen.
What's good to see y'all this morning? Everybody ready to go? Feeling good? Is it raining when you come in? Is it raining when you came in? Uh, maybe it rain all afternoon. It'd be a good afternoon to take a nap. Uh, it is good to see you. You know, I was thinking this morning, I'm, uh, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to do this Sunday school class, and I appreciate your all's patience with it. I'm reasonably sure that you can tell that uh, this is not what I do for a living. So uh, just hang in there and we'll get through it. I think we're doing good. Y'all are doing good. Okay, you got anything before we start? Anybody? All right, let's pray before we get started. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the blessings of it. We thank you, Father, for the good message that we got this morning. We just pray, Lord, that you help us to be ready. We know, as, as our pastor told us, we're in the end times. Just be with us and lead us, Lord. Pray for our Sunday school class here this morning. Pray the Holy Spirit be with us and teach us. Just help us to do things to be pleasing in your sight. Pray for those that are not here for whatever reason. Just be with them and take care of them. And we thank you, Lord, for safety and blessings you give us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, first thing. Uh, we're going to the mission the weekend after Labor Day. We're leaving on Friday morning. That's the Friday after Labor Day. Uh, be back Sunday afternoon, so we'll be back to church Sunday night. We're going, we're going Friday, take the stuff down there. We're going to uh, hand out Bible tracts with those men Friday afternoon, uh, some street preaching that they do. Saturday, we're going to the women's mission. Some of the folks that are going with us haven't been there. We're going down there and look around, see what they've got going on. Right now, they don't have any women at that mission house. They have what they have done is a program that these ladies go these ladies go through. And when they go when they go into this house, they make a commitment to go through this program. And Patty and I were talking about it. I think you need to understand a little bit about what's going on here. These these women that are going through this program are from the city. Okay? They're living on the streets in Columbus, uh, prostitution, drugs, the whole shebang. Well, when they get involved with this church and this mission, what they do with these ladies is they take them to this mission house. Now, this mission house is 30 miles out of Columbus. It's out in the country. It's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's nothing there. There's no TV. There's no internet. There's just the house. Well, that'd be hard enough on a normal person, you know? And, and these ladies, a lot of times, they struggle with it. But some of them make it, some of them don't. They had two ladies that were there that just finished, graduated their program, have gone back to Columbus, have jobs, are members of the church. So it's, you know, when it does work, it works very well. Yeah. The thing that, that you need to remember, and I know that a lot of you all know about this mission. We've been doing this now for the last few years. Some of you are new to it. These people at this mission are very, you know, we talk about being God-centered. They're very God-centered. They're, uh, they, they, they focus on what it is they're doing and that's their whole that's their whole program is getting these people off the street. And it's going good, praise the Lord for it. So we're gonna take the stuff down there and try to help them a little bit. We'll be back Sunday afternoon. Uh, I'll say this one more time. If there are any of you all that would like to go, this would be a good time to go. Uh, even if you're not going to go Friday, you could go Saturday, drive down there, go to the service, go to the service Sunday morning, come back. But that's up to you. You're welcome to go. Okay? Any questions? Next. How many of you have never been door knocking? Hold your up, 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 up. Okay, good, good. We are getting, we're fixing to solve that problem. <laughs> uh, this Saturday, this coming Saturday, we're going door knocking. Now, let me explain to you what, what's going on here. Uh, I guess it's been a, a year ago now or something like that. Craig started, Craig Gillespie started, and you all started going out like once a month, street preaching, holding signs, passing out Bible tracks, that kind of thing. Well, this virus started, and we've gotten away from that. Nobody's fault. We just got away from it. We need to get back to it. Sure. 
Uh, and that's what we're going to do this Saturday. We're going to start trying to go at least once a month, maybe maybe more often. Uh, we're not going to street preach. We're not going to hold signs. We're going to knock on doors and hand out Bible tracts. This is a lot of fun. If you go, it's a lot of work. And when you get done, you'll be wore out. It's a lot of walking, banging on doors. Uh, but it's, it's, good, it's good fellowship, you know. I heard somebody say one time, and I, I believe this, the best fellowship that you can have is fellowship together while you're serving. Okay? Uh, and we have a big time. Oh, we're going to do donuts. Okay? Activity building, quarter after nine, donuts. All the sugar you can stand, eat all the donuts you can hold. Then we're going to go Rich Creek, walk around on Park Hill. Quarter after nine, we leave about a quarter to ten. Let me say that one more time, Rodney. Donuts, something. All the donuts you can eat. Yeah. Just be here. <laughs> yeah. right? uh, if nobody's here with me and Rodney, then we'll eat all the donuts we can stand. So, if you've never gone, let me say this. Don't, don't, don't let that bother you. All right? You can go. There are several people in here that have gone several times. You can go. We'll get paired up, and you can go with somebody that knows what they're doing. And basically, all you got to do is walk and hold the Bible track. Right, yeah. you know? We'll knock on the doors, speak to the people. That's how you get started. It's not hard. The more people we got, the faster it goes. Uh, Park Hill. How many of you are familiar with Park Hill over at Rich Creek? Okay, we're going to park. We'll park the church bus probably right there at the, at the park where the basketball courts and stuff are. We can walk. There's all kinds of walk. So that's. Put that on your to-do list. Uh, if the weather's bad, check the church Facebook page, okay? If we don't have anything on there, the preacher will take care of that. If we don't have any, anything on there by 9 o'clock or something, then we're gone, all right? If we're not, he'll try to have something on there before then. And we're not going to go in the rain. I mean, if it's pouring the rain down, the weather's bad, we'll wait. We're going to do it the next weekend, okay? Uh, oh, how many of you got one of these? Let me see your hands. How many got Mike? Is that it? There's a pile of them laying back there. They're free. All you got to do is pick one up. All right. On the back of it, it says National Sword of the Lord comes running the race, rescheduled August 17th through the 20th. Streaming live. See that? Monday night at 8 o'clock, I think that says. Monday night, 8 o'clock. Richard Harper speaking. Okay, now we <clears throat> we have uh, got dialed in Facebook and YouTube. Seem to be familiar with that. So if you are Richard Harper, if you want to hear Richard Harper, Monday night, eight o'clock. Okay. After ten o'clock too. Sir. After ten o'clock too. They have Richard Harper at ten. They have a service at ten o'clock. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, actually, let me get my glasses. So I know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> This conference lasts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, they have one at 10, 11, and then they do it at evening. Right, right. Now, Monday, they don't have the 10 and 11. The 10 and 11 starts on Tuesday. But yeah, this thing lasts all week, and they got all these speakers. Not just Richard Hart. I just mentioned him because we know him. I'm sure that would be a good, uh, you know, something good to spend your time at. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? All right, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. Now, here's where we are. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to finish this, this study with the Holy Spirit. We'll try to finish this next week. We're working on a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, where we are so far is we're actually, we've been through the basics like when we get the Spirit, how long we get the Spirit, um, does the Spirit ever leave? We, you know, we've, we've done some foundation work. Now, we're working on this relationship. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Last week, we started talking about how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Okay?
Okay. First of all, we understand we're all on, on the same ground here with the fact that when you get saved, you have the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. It's called the indwelling. Okay. So we all got it. Or all of us that are saved have got it. Okay. Now, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Remember that still small voice? Remember that? The Bible, uh, our preacher, Christian fellowship. You go do this door knocking thing, and the Holy Spirit will be wearing you out next week. Go here, go here. Knock on this door, knock on this door. Christian fellowship. Uh, the Holy Spirit can, and we need to realize this, the Holy Spirit can speak to us however he decides. It's not always that still small voice, okay? The Holy Spirit can speak to me off of a bumper sticker on the back end of a car going right. up 460, okay? What we, what our problem is, what we need to be aware of is we gotta pay attention, yeah. okay? You gotta listen to pay attention. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Now, one other thing, if we wanna talk about this, and then we'll move on a little bit. Look at Romans chapter eight, 26 and 27. Verse 26 says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now, you see where it says, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. All right? In my Bible, right over here in the, in the column, there's a little note there that says, man's ignorance. Okay? We know not what we should pray for. We simply don't have sense enough to know what we should pray for. You know, we begin to pray for things that we want. The Holy Spirit keeps all that channel in the direction that it needs to go. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, what we want to talk about here is, and we talked about this last week, and we don't want to lose this. We want to make sure that, we, that we, we know what we're doing here. When we pray, we talked about who we pray to and how we pray. When we pray, the Holy Spirit is right here. Okay? Everything, all the prayers that we, everything that we pray for goes right through here. Like this. And the Holy Spirit adjusts it for us as it needs to be adjusted. Does that make sense? Okay? Now, the point is, we and, we and here again we talk about this, we want to remember how holy this actually is, okay? And we need to be aware of the fact that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, okay, part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit that was here at the creation of everything is going to take the time to stop and work on my prayer, okay? That's, that's, uh, that begins to get to the place where you, you really just can't imagine that. We don't want to lose that. Now, when, the, when we're praying and the Holy Spirit is making these intercessions for us, okay, where, where is Jesus Christ? Come on. Stop. Where's Jesus Christ right now? What? On the throne. On the throne, where? On the throne, where? Right hand of God. Right hand of God. Good, good, good. Doing what? Making intercession. Making intercession for me. Okay? So it's not just the Holy Spirit. Look down at verse 34. Verse 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who is also making interest, who also making intercession for us. Okay? So, now, it's not just the Holy Spirit. Alright? We've got Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of God making intercession for me, saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. They didn't mean to do that. Okay? We need to remember those things. That is, that is, that is basically what it's all about here. Alright? We talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came. Alright? Remember this? to glorify God, to glorify Jesus Christ, and to testify of Jesus Christ, okay? The intercession that they are making for us is to keep us pointed in that direction. Remember we talked about uh, 
It's been a month ago or so. Glorifying God in our bodies. The whole purpose of us being here is to glorify God. See, that all, that all meshes now. All right? I'm here to glorify God. The Holy Spirit is here to intercede for me to make sure that I'm glorifying God. Jesus Christ is here to intercede for me to make sure that I'm glorifying God. That's the direction I want to go. Okay? Okay. All right. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of John, chapter 14. Now, what we're going to work on is this relationship. We're going to get this relationship developed. We know how the Holy Spirit talks to us. Okay? So we're going to get this work. John chapter 14 and verse number 16. John chapter 14, verse number 16. This says, And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Let me read that again. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. Okay, another comforter. Who was the first comforter? Come on. Christ. Christ was the first comforter. Now we're going to get another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Okay? What was Jesus Christ's relationship? Now listen. What was Jesus Christ's relationship with his disciples? Tell me one thing. Just tell me, tell me something about Jesus Christ and his disciples. Shepherd. He was a shepherd. All right? They were the sheep. Friends. Friends. Okay. Christ and his disciples were friends. Master. What? Teacher. He was a teacher. He was a master. master. Okay? Teacher, master, God. He rebuked them. They cried on his shoulder. Jesus Christ and his disciples were together 24 hours a day. Day after day after day after day. He was preparing them. Wasn't he? All right. He was with them all the time. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit should be exactly the same as the disciples' relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? We, he is with us all the time. He is here to teach us, lead us, rebuke us, comfort us, help us, whatever we need to keep us pointed in the right direction. So, we have the same relationship. All right? Okay, now, again, what we talked about last week, remember we talked about Roger, Hans, and Brenda Gillespie, remember that? All enclosed in California, remember? And the big question was, who's driving? Okay, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, who's driving? Now you have to understand, and this is important, this is really important. There comes a time in all of this relationship and all this scripture that you're reading and everything that you do that you get to decide. Okay? As far as the Holy Spirit's concerned, the Holy Spirit's back here jumping up and down saying, hey, no, 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 don't do that. It's up to me whether I listen or not. It's up to me whether I do it or not. Now, the consequences, not necessarily up to me, but the original decision Who's, who's in charge here in this relationship? You know, let me tell you something about mine and Patty's relationship. Okay? I'm in charge. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, that right? Huh? I see. See how easy that was? Now, once you get that figured out, everything else will fall into place. And the good thing about it is, she makes me think I'm in charge. Yeah. So, it's just smooth as silk right down the road. All right? Your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to decide who's leading and who's following. All right? It won't work. It won't work until you get that figured out. Okay. Take your Bibles. Turn to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter number 5. And verse number 19. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 19. Got it? First 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Jesse, you got it? Yep. What's it say? Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. There it is. Now, why would God tell us quench not the spirit? Because we can. Because we can. Yeah, it's exactly right. All right. It's, it's like saying, okay, don't lay your hand on that hot stove. Well, you tell somebody that because they can lay their hand on that stove. All right? Quench not the spirit. So, that all goes back to, see, now we're getting into this relationship pretty close here. Who's in charge? I can, I can not listen. All right? I don't have to pay attention here. I need to understand that. Now, go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 15. Chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31. Chapter 15, verse 31. The Bible says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. All right, what you want to concentrate on there is the hearing part. He that heareth. Okay? All right. Go to the book of Mark. Book of Mark. Chapter 4. Book of Mark, chapter 4. Look at verse number 9. Verse number 9. It says, And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, He said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, go to verse number 23. Verse number 23. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. What, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Now, you can go through the Bible and find 25 different places where it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Where it says, Listen, listen, hear, listen, listen, hear. All right? Now, I'm going to give you a personal opinion here. Where it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. I think in my opinion, that there's more than that, that there's more to that than just hearing, all right? If, um, if me and Patty are riding down the road in the car, she sat over here talking about the grandkids, about the weather, about whatever, whatever. <laughs> she sat there talking, all right? And I hear her, I got it, all right? I'm listening. I'm also listening to the radio. I'm also listening to the air conditioner fan run. And I'm also listening to this tractor trailer that's going by me over here right. on the four lane. Okay, so I'm listening. I've got an ear. I hear. All right. I don't think that's the kind of listening that God's talking about. That's right. Okay. Now, when she says, you think you might want to stop that red light? Now, now I'm listening. Okay. That's listening. Now I'm going to do something. Yes, I do. Honey. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to stop. Now I'm paying attention. All right. That's the kind of hearing that we're talking about here. Anybody can listen, all right? But what are you gonna do with it? Are you paying attention, yeah. okay? Are you gonna work with that once you've heard it? That's, what my, that's gonna make all the difference in the world. Now, you know, we go through this and, and we've, we're beginning to get into this pretty deep here, all right, as far as this relationship. We've got the Holy Spirit talking to us. Now we're, we're, beginning, we're beginning to think about listening. Talk about listening. All right? We need some practical application. What's going to, what, what are we going to do with this? All right? You can take, you take a kid and teach him to drive nails. He'll drive nails all day long. Eventually, he's going to get tired of driving nails. You're going to have to build something to keep him interested in driving nails. All right? That's what we need here. We need some practical application as far as what are we going to do with this relationship in my life and how does it work? Okay? Okay. I want you to pretend, and this will be a tough one, I want you to pretend for just a minute that you're all 
be Virginia Tech basketball fans. Okay? <laughs> I love the Hokies. Go Hokies. Hokie this, Hokie that. Virginia Tech basketball. Okay? Now, you're sitting at home and you've got a buddy that calls you on Saturday evening and says, Dave, you're not going to believe this. I just got two free tickets to the Virginia Tech basketball game tomorrow night, center court, front row. They're playing Duke. Let's go. Okay? Now, what's the problem? What's the problem? The Holy Spirit saying, no, 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 no. Church, 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 church. All right? So here we are. Here is a practical application. Now, church Sunday night. All right? Now, remember this. <laughs> this, this, is really, this is how it works. This is how it works with me. All right? Remember three weeks ago we were talking about a biblical worldview. Remember that? Biblical worldview. So now, I've got Satan over here, and the world saying, go ahead. It's one night. You know? It's going to be a dull message anyway. Just go. One night ain't going to make any difference. Alright? First thing I need is a biblical foundation. Alright? That's what we've been talking about. This is how it works. Is there any place in the Bible that it says it's okay for me to go to the ball game and miss church? No, sir. No, there ain't. So I'm on sinking sand now. Right? Okay? Now the Holy Spirit is saying, Dave, this, this is not a good idea. You need to be in church. Right? Here's my choice. Right? First of all, I can quench the Holy Spirit. I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't want to hear it. See you next Sunday. And that's, and that's what a lot of us do. I've done that before. Let me tell you something, just so we're clear. I have quenched the Holy Spirit. All right? It never turns out good. Sure. And I'm really ashamed of it. But I have done it. It has happened in my life. I'm a sinner. I made a lot of bad decisions. And there were times when the Holy Spirit would be saying, hey, hey you might want to stop thinking about this. And I'd say, no, no, I got it. I got it. So, ball game. Now what are we going to do? Well, here's what happens next. He is... You know, you're, you're, the Holy Spirit's burdened your heart with this. So you feel a little guilty, you still want to go to ball game. You feel a little guilty, and you tell your buddy, let me think about this. When you're thinking, let me pray about this. Now, this is important. Do not go to God and ask for something of the Holy Spirit if you're not ready for the answer. That's right, yeah. You need to be very careful, all right? If you say, okay, I won't pray about this. So you do. God, what am I supposed to do? The Holy Spirit's still saying, no, 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 no. All right? You know that the Holy Spirit is saying, no, no, no. Now you've prayed about it, and it's even louder. It's like there was a big billboard outside your house that says, you cannot go. Okay? But you go anyway. Now you're accountable. Now comes the bad stuff. You have talked to God, you've listened to the Holy Spirit, and you intentionally went to the ball game anyway. Think about this, Smith. Most of you all, or all of you all, have had kids, deal with kids. Your teenage son, your teenage son comes to you and says, how about let me take the car to school? You say, huh, okay, all right, but I don't want to hear of you being a rich creek in that car. School and back. All right? Okay, yeah, I do that. Well, let's say you get a car, you hop up to Rich Creek as fast as you can go. Okay? Now, it just so happens that your dad's buddy passes you on the road. He calls the house and says, hey, I saw Dave over Rich Creek. Accountability. Now, it, now, you were told, you were told not to do this, you did it anyway. Now we begin to talk about the chastisement. No. Okay? All right, the other option would be, of course, let's listen to what the Holy Spirit says. The Holy Spirit is saying, you know, I'd like to go to the ball game. I really would. There's nothing wrong with the ball game. But I can't go on Sunday night. I've got to go to church. The Holy Spirit says, then you just can't do that. So you go to church. All right? That's how it works. There is three choices that you can make. Now, let me give you another one right quick. 
we talked about the going door knocking. All right? Now, bless your heart. You have to decide if you're going or not. All right? The preacher has a work day schedule. All right? As soon as he stands up here and says, okay, you're going to do this work day. Now, you got to make a decision. Yes, I'll go. No, I'm not going. So, according to what we're talking about, remember, don't forget this. You've got this, you got Satan over here saying, no, 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 no. You don't have to go. Come over here. That happens all the time, and that's hard. That's not something to make light of. That is hard. Alright? So, door knock. Now, there were some of us in here, and I know this, I know this for sure. There were some of us in here who said, I ain't got time for that. It's Saturday. I got grass to cut. I got the uh, that's the only day I get to spend with my kids. You know? I need to go to Walmart. I gotta do this, I gotta do that. That's the only day out. What the Holy Spirit said. Are we listening? Or did we just quench the Holy Spirit? Shh. And say, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay? Now, same thing. You say, well, you know, maybe. I might be able to do something this. So you pray about it. Remember, if you're gonna ask, you better be ready for the answer. You pray, the Holy Spirit says, yes, sir, I expect you to be right there front and center. Now what are we going to do? Ain't nothing to do but be there front and center, you know? You say, well, no, i got to put the grass. Now you're accountable. Now you have accountability. The other option would be see what the Holy Spirit said. Here, here's one thing you need to remember. Now listen to this. This is important. When you pray, when you say, Lord... Please have the Holy Spirit show me what to do about this door knock thing, son. Saturday. You don't necessarily, you can't expect an answer. It's not like, boom, here, do this. You know? It may be tomorrow before he tells you. It may be next Thursday before you get a good answer here. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait. Your faith has to be strong. And you think, okay, he will tell me what to do. And he will. Okay? Okay. You got any questions? We good with that? Now it's the Holy Spirit jumping up and down back right here. Hey, 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 hey. Huh? You know? I, I have told you, we talked about this before. Pat and I do a lot, do a lot of Bible tracks. Alright. Remember, don't ask if you don't want to know. Alright, so we started with this. And I have heard of these Bible tracks. So, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, please have the Holy Spirit show me what I need to do with these Bible tracts and who I need to give them to. Well, it was like the floodgates just opened. All right? Every time I step out of the truck, there's one day, how about that guy over there? How about that guy right back there? Now, you think that sounds silly, but it's not. Sure. I mean, that's the way it works. And I'm running right here, here. You know, I'm trying to keep up. We were over at Beckley. Uh, this is when we first started. Out there on the other end of Beckley, there's a strip mall out there next to John W. I. Furniture Company. And there's, anyhow, we was out there in that little mall in the parking lot handing out mile tracks. Okay? The Holy Spirit says, and see, I'm working, in this particular case, I'm dealing with this still small horse back here. Okay? The Holy Spirit said, that, see that green pickup truck down there? Well, over in the corner of the, of the parking lot, there's a green Chevrolet pickup. It looks like it's about a 1950 model. There ain't nothing holding it together but rust. I mean, this is just a mess. Over in the corner of that parking lot, Holy Spirit says, you need to take a Bible track away. Now, there have been times when I have disobeyed the Holy Spirit. This was beginning to be one of them times. I'm thinking, I'm not doing that. It's half a mile over there. I've got stuff to do right here. It's kept, it's kept on, on, oh, take a mile track over, take a mile track over. So I go over there. There's this old woman in the truck, right? She got a cigarette about this long. The, the cab, you can't see her for the smoke in the cab. She's sitting there smoking in this truck with the ruin just rolled up. She's got long, straight, gray hair, an old baseball cap on. No teeth. <laughs> I don't know, what's this all about? You know, so I just walk over and uh, take on the wind. She looks at me like, what's your point? What's your problem? 
Down comes the window. Out comes the smoke. I handed him the mouse and said, man, I just wanted to bring this to you. Hope you have a good day. Thank you very much. Up goes the window. I have no idea what, what was going on there. But what I do know is that for some reason the Holy Spirit wanted me to put a Bible track in that woman's hand. That's how it works with the Bible track. That's true. And, you know, you know it, it's that way with anything. If, if you, if you, it, it takes practice, I think. If you're going to deal with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's going to talk to you, you have to practice. That's right. You know? Uh, every day, when you get up in the morning, you start. Remember, do you remember three or four weeks ago, I was talking to you about something, and we were talking about praying all the time. You're supposed to pray continually, and how we are peculiar people, because we're praying all the time, which means we're talking to ourselves. Right? Okay. Take your Bibles. Look at, uh, we're not going to get to finish this, but we'll look at it right quick. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Now, this is this is what we're going. This is what we're going to do next week, and this is what we're going to finish. This is Paul's prayer. Okay, he's praying for the people of Ephesus. He says in verse fourteen, "For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." Let's stop right there, Smith. Who's Paul praying to? Who's Paul praying to? God. Yeah. Says so he's praying. To, remember, we talked last week about praying to Jesus Christ and praying to the Holy Spirit. Paul's praying to God. All right. Now, when he does this, when he does this, is the Holy Spirit filtering his prayers? Yes or no? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, sure is. It sure is. Is that by Paul's got the Holy Spirit just like we've got the Holy Spirit? Yes, he's filtering his prayers. Paul has Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand side of God interceding for him, just like he intercedes for us. Okay? So, the important part there, and here's what we're going to get to next week. Look down at verse number 19. It says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Filled with all the fullness of God. All right? This relationship that we've got with God, or with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's talking to us. Now we're beginning to listen, and we're going to practice. We're going to work at this. We're going to talk to the Holy Spirit. Okay? We're going to go to God and say, Lord, have the Holy Spirit show me what to do today. Go to God and say, Lord, have the Holy Spirit show me what to do about this. What to do with my children. When to go here. When to go there. It gets to the place where it's, it's virtually every decision that you make. That's right, yes. And you're walking around talking to yourself. Because, <laughs> because you're praying all the time. Lord, have the Holy Spirit show me what to do about this. Lord, what, where, where am I going here? And now it gets to where it's more than just answered questions. All right? You wake up in the middle of the night. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, that's something I need you to do tomorrow. Well, since you're awake, let me tell you about this. It, it happens. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've heard Earl Anchor. How many of you have never heard Earl Anchor preach? You have never heard Earl Anchor preach? All of you have? Okay, good. I've heard Earl Anchor talk about stopping his pickup truck on the interstate and getting out and running circles around it because the Holy Spirit's burdening him with something to do. So, there it is. That's how this relationship works. And here's the important part. The success of it or the failure of it rests solely on your shoulders. That's right. It's entirely up to you. It can be a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous blessing. Or it can be a royal pain in the pain. It can be a pain. So it just depends on how you approach it and how you deal with it. What you want to do about it. Now, next week, 
And we're going to finish up. We're going to talk about the fullness of the Spirit. All right? We have the indwelling of the Spirit. We're going to talk about the fullness. All right? Being full of the Spirit. That's what that prayer was about. And we're going to continue to talk next week about talking to ourselves. Okay? Girls, I really enjoyed y'all being here. You need to come more often. All right? You're welcome up here all the time. Okay. Any questions? Anybody? Anything? Donuts. Saturday morning at the quarter after nine, over in the fellowship hall, all the donuts, them big, we're talking them big Amish donuts that them ladies make. I mean, they will blow the blow your head off with the sugar. Okay? Then we'll go to the door Anything else? Okay, Jesse, you gonna pray for us and we'll be done. Lord, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you for the lesson we had today. Uh, something I took away is are we listening? Are we halfway listening to you? Or are we in the conversation? And I hope that we are listening to, to your voice and uh, following the directions that you're leading us. Lord, thank you and bless us the rest of the service in Jesus' name.